Thank you for joining me upstairs here. And I do hope that you'll come and visit us sometime at your convenience here in Anaheim Hills. Uh, we thought what we would do is just share some insights into who Word for Asia is and what we do. Perhaps one of the most common questions I receive is, Gene, what do you do? And how did you get started doing that? Number one, what do we do? Word for Asia is a for-profit consulting firm. But we're very specific. We consult. We consult only for nonprofits and only for those that wish to work in mainland China. Now, I'm not aware of anybody who does exactly that. Uh, our role is to help quality Western nonprofits achieve their objectives according to policies and regulations in China to do their work legally. Now, the question is, well, did you graduate from high school and say that's what you were going to set out to do? Of course not. I mean, who, am, who out there did that? I mean, to begin with, we all thought we'd be psychology majors or something. But um, there's a backstory to it, like there always is. For 30 years, I worked in the nonprofit sector. So my experience, my education, my um, network were all in that arena. And then in 1998, uh, I was invited to go along with other denominational executives uh, at the invitation of the Chinese government for a three-week trip. At that time, China was seeking entrance into the World Trade Organization, and they realized that there was, a, in their minds, a great misunderstanding of the realities of China. And they wanted to show a group of leaders some of what they were doing in the religious sector, the nonprofit world, with the aged, uh, with the uh, uh, physically challenged, and so the three-week trip. When I came back, I realized to some degree what I didn't know. And I didn't have all my questions answered, but there's some takeaways which have guided this journey for now almost 24 years. And let me just share a few of those with you. Number one, we need to understand the seriousness of the word face in China. Uh, Miangsi. Oh, and for the record, I am not Chinese fluent. All my staff is, and they are Chinese. And so I let them handle the technicalities. But the Chinese culture is pervaded by face. And all of us have pride. That's common to the human race. But I believe the Chinese culture takes it almost to another level that few of us can fully appreciate or understand. And that was critical. Uh, let me tell you how it works out. Uh, a few years after I'd been there the first time, I was visiting with a ranking official in Shanghai. And I said to him with all the passion I could muster, I said, I and many of my friends in the West would love to help China. He looked stone-faced for a few seconds. And then he said, Gene, China doesn't need your help. But if you wish to come and serve the people of China, we welcome you. I think that was a good illustration of face. And most of the regulations and the policies are in place, in essence, to protect the face of the country of China. That's national security. Of the culture of China. And that's quite a pushback recently 
Um, we don't, they do not want to, to become Western. Uh, if you would like to read a good book, uh, I would encourage you to read one entitled, When China Rules the World. Now, the author of that book, and it's easy to find, does not argue for a military takeover of the world. But his basic thesis is, I think his name is Martin Jacques, that uh, Asian country to modernize, but not necessarily westernize, as i.e. Japan did to some degree, as Korea did, South Korea did to some degree, as the Philippines, etc., even Singapore. And I believe he's right in that regard. Now, there's much in the book I might debate, but I agree with that. Uh, China doesn't have any desire to put on a Western hat. And all of that is consumed in the issue of face. The second challenge given to me in 1998 was simple. Gene, you say that you're a person of faith. You say you're a person of integrity then don't come to my country and sneak around in here. That's deceitful. If you want to come in, come in the front door. If you have requests, ask us and trust us. And fortunately, for the sake of word for Asia, we began that path in 1998. That may have been unbeknownst to me at the time, the best advice I was given. For 1998, it's possible you could sneak around in China to some degree. In 2021, it's impossible. From the moment you enter the country to the moment you turn your phone on to the moment you use your computer or you travel anywhere on any vehicle, they can know where you are. With apps today, they probably know who you're with. <laughs> when you check into the hotel, they know <laughs> who you are, where you are, and probably possibly what you're doing. Now, modern surveillance and technology has made this possible. Um, my advice to all of our clients is, don't sneak around. Now, along with that, know the regulations and the policies. <laughs> they change. Uh, during my short time traveling in China during the last 20 plus years, policies have had major changes at least twice that affect nonprofit activity. And so we need to know them. We need to understand them. Along with that, we should understand the country and the culture before we try to judge it. And uh, if you'll join me in the future, I'll share that those three things, Taiwan, three self, and toilets.